Just a quick reminder before we get into the lesson to download the hands-on lab exercises that accompany this complete CCNA course. I'll include the link in the description. Also remember to subscribe and hit the notifications bell so you don't miss any of the lessons in the course. Okay, let's get into it. In this lecture, you'll learn about loopback interfaces. A loopback interface is a logical interface and it allows you to assign an IP address to a router or a layer 3 switch which is not tied to a physical interface. Because they don't have any physical attributes that can fail, loopback interfaces never go down. Loopbacks are logical, so it's impossible for them to physically be in the same subnet as other devices. So they're usually assigned a slash 32 subnet mask to avoid wasting IP addresses. That's the standard. It's best practice to assign a loopback interface on all of your routers and all of your layer 3 switches. The loopback is commonly used for traffic that terminates on the router itself. That could be most commonly management traffic, also for other things like voice over IP, if you need to send voice over IP traffic to the router, also for BGP peering, etc. That provides redundancy if there are multiple paths to the router. You'll see how that works in a second. The loopback is also used to identify the router in OSPF because the loopback address is used as the router ID. So you'll see this when we do the OSPF section. When you're looking at the OSPF database, etc., you'll see routers being identified by the router ID, which is the highest loopback address on that router. The same loopback interface is usually used for multiple tasks. For example, if you need to send traffic to the router for management and for BGP, we'll usually just have one loopback interface and use the same IP address for everything. Multiple loopbacks can be configured though. It's not common, we don't normally do that. It's usually only done for special use cases where an additional loopback is required. So not standard. Okay, so here you'll see an example of why we're using a loopback. We've got a PC, let's say, which is behind router R4, and it's got IP address 10.1.2.10. And we want to connect to the R1 router to manage it. Well, we've got two paths that we can get to R1 via R4 from. We can either go along the top path or we can go along the bottom path. But if the top path goes down, we can't connect to the 10.0.0.1 IP address on R1, it's down. If the bottom path goes down, we can't connect to 10.0.3.1. So we're gonna use a loopback, so that way we get a single IP address that we can use to connect to R1, even if one of those paths goes down. So what we do is we add interface loopback 0 and we give it IP address in our example 192.168.1.1 slash 32. You can use any IP address you want for the loopback and we then advertise that in the routing protocol. R4 will then learn the two paths that it can use to get to 192.168.1.1 and it will use whichever one has got the lowest cost or both if they've got equal costs. And R4 can still connect to 192.168.1.1 even if either path goes down. So this is useful for management and it's really critical for other things like BGP and IP telephony. Let's say that we're sending IP telephony traffic from behind R4 to R1. We want to make sure that it's always going to get there even if one of the paths goes down. So we don't direct it at a physical address on R1, which can go down. We direct it at the logical address. And that way, even if one path goes down, the traffic is still going to get there across the other path. So that's why we use loopbacks. So let's configure this in the lab. It's going to be a quick and easy lab. We'll do it right now. So I'm going to put the loopback interface, 192.168.1.1 IP address, slash 32 on R1, and we'll see how R4 has got the two paths to get there. 
Okay, so I'm on the lab, I'm on R4 here, and I'll just check that I've got EIGRP running everywhere. So I'll do a show IP route, and I can see I've got an EIGRP route going out fast ethernet two slash zero, which is via R5, and I've got other EIGRP routes going out fast zero zero, which is R3. So I want to have two different paths available with one IP address that I can use across those two different paths to get to R1. So if I go in R1 and I do a show IP interface brief, I've just got my physical interfaces configured there right now. So I'll go to global configuration and then to create a loopback interface, the command is just interface loopback and then the number you want to use. That creates the interface as well as taking you to the configuration mode for the interface. And notice that the interface goes up immediately because it is a loopback. There's no need to do a no shutdown. If I do a no shutdown, it won't do any harm though, that's okay. Okay, I need to configure the IP address on here. So IP address, I was going to give it 192.168.1.1 and I'll follow best practice of using a slash 32 subnet mask. So that's 255.255.255.255. So that is my loopback interface configured and given an IP address. I also need to make sure that it's being advertised in my routing protocol. So I'll do a do show run and for this section EIGRP just to check my EIGRP config and I can see I'm using EIGRP 100 and it's just network 10.0.0.0 that is included in there right now. So I need to include my loopback address as well. So I'll go router EIGRP 100 and then network 192.168.1.1 and it's a wildcard mask that's the inverse of the subnet mask so 0 .0 .0 0.0.0.0 and hit enter and now if I go back over to R4 EIGRP converges pretty quickly so let's see if the route is there yet yeah it's there already I've got a route going to 192.168.1.1. There is two paths, but one of them has got a better cost. So that's why it's the fast Ethernet 0 slash 0 path that has made it into the routing table right now. I can ping 192.168.1.1 and that works. And if I trace to 192.168.1.1, I can see that it's going along the top path with the next hop of 10.1.1.2 and that was out interface fast ethernet zero slash zero. So let's check that I can fail over and still get to the loop back. So I'll go config T on here and go to interface fast zero slash zero and I'm gonna shut down that interface. So that first path is not gonna be available anymore. I see my EIGRP adjacency going down and now if I do a show IP route, so before the route to the loopback was going via fast ethernet zero slash zero. If I do a show IP route now, I can see that it's in the routing table from EIGRP again, and now it's failed over to the other path. It's gonna use fast ethernet two slash zero. So I can still ping 192.168.1.1, and if I trace route to it, I'm gonna see it going down the bottom path via R5. Okay, so that's why we want to use loopbacks so that we can get to our routers no matter what path we've got available, still using that same IP address. Okay, that was it for loopbacks. See you in the next lecture. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to get the complete course ad free right now, then you can enroll in my CCNA Gold Bootcamp by clicking the link above my head or in the description. It also includes full study notes, quizzes, and 150 pages of additional troubleshooting labs you can't find anywhere else.